Hi guys, look what arrived today from PCBWay.com, your supply for high quality manufactured and assembled prototype PCBs. So let's have a look what's inside this box. Some packaging, some nice stickers, a nice rubbery pen, but what else? Hmm. I'm just kidding. Of course the board are inside this bubble wrap. So let's unwrap it and have a look inside. Anti-static bags, that's a good idea. The boards in this video were very kindly sponsored by PCBWay.com. Ordering the boards is very easy, just upload your Gerber files. Then you can see this preview. Select how many boards you want and other options. I chose LED free. I also chose the assembly service. This means all SMD components will be assembled by PCB way. Here you can see the board together with all the through hole components we need to solder. Connectors, potentiometers, amplifiers, ESPs and a couple of headers. The details can be found on my GitHub. Now let's have a closer look. This thing looks really really good. And it's way smaller than the existing through hole version. The functionality is exactly the same. You can download both versions on my GitHub. This is the 5V regulator, the capacitor, the diode, another diode, the ULN2003 LED drivers, a couple of resistors. So all SMD components were already assembled by PCB way. We only have to assemble the through hole components. So let's heat up the soldering iron and get started. By the way, I'm using LED free solder. And we will start with these headers for the amplifier. Having a soldering jig is always a good idea. So I'm using the PCB as a jig. Always heat the board and the pin at the same time. Then apply solder until you have a nice joint. Joints are looking good, but the pins are a little bit at an angle. It doesn't really matter for this application. I recommend to solder one joint per header. Then check the angle first. This one is not good, so we have to reflow it. Now it's ok, so we can solder the remaining pins. Ok, nice joints, I only have to clean them later. Female headers are used to hold the remaining rows of pins in place. Ready to solder the next ones. Again, a female header is used to hold the pin row in place. Now let's proceed with the LED headers.
That's it. All headers are done. Time for the battery connector. This one is bigger and so it takes a little bit more heat. Ok, done. It's coming together. Next step, the 20 kilo ohm volume potentiometer. Okay, now we are ready for the ESP32 headers. The ESP32 is used as a cheek. Everything fits nicely. Time to solder the female headers. The remaining headers were soldered off camera. As you can see, this thing is way more compact than the through hole version. The solder joints are looking good. So let's remove the ESP32. As you can see, the amplifier module is still missing. And I forgot to cut the potentiometer legs. Now it's better. Time for the first test. I have already attached the battery cable. It connects between the battery and the ESC blocks. There is no ESC connected. So we have to supply the ESP32 with this orange bridge wire. My DIY Arduino receiver is connected to the RX pin. It's controlling the sound controller via SBOS. Before we connect the battery, we want to do some short circuit tests. Ok, no short circuit. Now it's time to test the 5 volt regulator. Let's disconnect the receiver. So in case the 5V regulator doesn't work properly, it doesn't get damaged. So let's plug in the battery cable. Will it explode? No smoke so far. That's a good sign. Now let's measure the 5V rail. 5.02. That's perfect. Now I have plugged in the ESP32, the LED test chick and the receiver. Let's plug it in. The transmitter is still off and the hazard lights are on. That's perfect. So now let's test the LED drivers using the transmitter. As you can see we have connection. Left indicator, right indicator, brake light, reversing light, blue light, parking light slash side markers, low beam, Fog lights, but the cab lights don't work, so there must be a problem. Hmm. Can you see it? Yes, here is a missing solder joint. No wonder. Now the cab light is working. Fine. 
Let's test the entire sequence. Okay. The shaker output is driven by three ULN 2003 channels in parallel. It's simulated by this LED. Works. Now we can solder the amplifier, but first we have to solder the speaker pins. Ok, the amplifier is now ready to go in place. In order to provide a little bit more support for the amplifier, I attach this piece of sticky tape. So now let's solder the amplifier module in place. After that we will be ready to test the sound. The position is not ok, so I have to reflow the joint. Now it's good. Ready to solder the remaining amplifier pins. We don't want these long pins on the bottom side, so let's cut them. That's it, the board is now finished. But will it work? Of course I will have to clean the solder joints. But otherwise it's looking good. Time to plug in the ESP32 again. Nice! No space consuming transistors and resistors anymore outside the ESP. Many thanks to PCBWay.com for sponsoring this video. Their PCB manufacturing and assembling service is really good, fast and cheap. So don't forget to check them out. You can find the link in the video description.
If you like this video, hit the subscribe button and turn on notifications so you don't miss the upcoming software configuration tutorial. Bye!